<laughs> it looks like there's a blue filter on everything right now. It's really weird. I can't explain it. It is really getting dark now. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh my God! I traveled over 2,000 miles to go see my first total solar eclipse. Now, this is an event that's a really big deal for space lovers. So I flew all the way to Detroit, road tripping to the outskirts of Ohio, where I camped out on the center line of totality. Meaning that on this line, you will 100% have a chance to see it. And the closer you are to the center line of totality means that you have a longer amount of time to view the eclipse while it's entirely obscured by the moon. So that's what I'm doing here today. And because this experience is so special and it's my first time, I wanted to share it with you today. I'm so excited. This is a big deal. This is a really big deal. Ah! The next total solar eclipse that will happen in North America won't take place until 2044, okay? That's a long time from now. Seeing it this time around, it's a really good opportunity. Today, I am here to show you science. If you don't know what a solar eclipse is, a total solar eclipse, okay? I'm gonna show you, okay? Do sun things. Yeah, that's perfect. Sometimes the moon crosses in front of the sun, but it doesn't fully cover it, and this is a partial. Other times, it crosses lining up perfectly, blocking the sun entirely. This is a total solar eclipse. And that's what we're viewing here today. Pretty much what I'm going to demonstrate here is why we don't have total solar eclipses once a month. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is eccentricity. This is my Earth. The moon has an eccentric orbit, meaning that it's not a perfect circle and it goes closer and farther away from the Earth. I'm closer. I'm there she's further away. away. Now I'm going to demonstrate why the heck I'm going up and down. <laughs> and the reason I'm doing that is because the orbit of the moon is inclined. So it's at a tilt like this. So it's going to go up and down. Yeah, sometimes Peacock. I'm too low. Sometimes she's sometimes too, too high. high. Because of this, the moon is not going to cross perfectly in front of the sun. This is why we don't have them once a month, but when they align perfectly, sun go here, and I'm at the correct incline and at the correct distance away from the sun, I'm going to block the sun entirely, and that's what creates a total solar eclipse. Now, if you want to watch a total solar eclipse, you do need glasses. These sunglasses are not proper eye protection. These also wouldn't work. This, no. Looking at the sun it does indeed cause blindness. So in order to view this event safely, you will need a real pair of solar glasses. According to the American Astronomical Society, in order to have a real safe pair of solar viewing glasses, they must be labeled with ISO 12312-2. Sometimes they can be written in more detail saying 1-2-3-12-2-2015, two, two, which is the international safety standard, which denotes the glasses reduce visible sunlight to safe levels to block UV and IR radiation. But because I am viewing a total solar eclipse today, there is going to be a point in this video where I am able to take off my glasses and view the moon obscuring the sun during totality. And as soon as that sun starts to peek back out from behind the moon, then you gotta put those glasses back on. And you also can't point your camera at the sun either. It will legit melt the lens. It's that bright, unless you have a filter, meaning you have to, you can either make one or you can buy one, but you made one, right? Bot slash made. You buy a cheap solar film for a couple bucks and then you can use cardboard, tape, whatever, to uh, build yourself a little custom filter. Now, you can actually use this right now on the camera lens to show you uh, the effect that it has. So here's no filter, then boom, there's the filter. You probably can't see me at all. So there you can actually see the sun and it's not gonna damage the camera. So this keeps everything safe uh, while we're viewing. I can even look through this and look at the sun right now. So yeah, that's how you make a filter. We have about 40 minutes until the moon starts to cover the sun and then it reaches its maximum totality around 312. We will be able to view it for a full three minutes and 58 seconds. So a couple of things that you will see during the total solar eclipse is you will see a 360 sunset. So every direction you look, there will be a sunset slash sunrise 
there, which is insane. Another thing is that apparently the crickets come out because they think that it's nighttime and animals start acting weird. Another thing is when it's reaching maximum totality, you'll start to notice that the shadows will also look weird. The first thing you'll see is you'll see a crescent moon shadow if you look at a shadow from a tree or even if you put up your hands in a waffle type pattern, you'll notice the shadow on the ground is a crescent moon, which is crazy. You will also see the shadows look like snakes on the ground. And then upon reaching totality, that is when you can take off your glasses and actually look at the moon slash sun the entire time. And then as soon as it starts, you know, uncovering the sun, you have to put your glasses back on to view it. But that entire time, it will be almost as if it's nighttime. Five, four, three, two, one. We have first contact. We have about an hour and 12 minutes until full totality. This is so crazy because I've seen partial before. It did get darker. It didn't fully cover though. So I'm excited to see what this is gonna be like. I feel like my life is gonna change. It just got a lot, a lot darker. I don't know if you can tell, but it's like a little colder and a little darker. It's blue. It's almost like blue hour right now, which is crazy. I gotta show you the shadows though. This is so sick. I don't know if you can tell, but my shadow is a crescent moon. Do you see that? Look at that. Uh, yeah. Little, little moon. That is a sliver. Wow. It is getting much darker out right now. The sky is more blue. It's like a darker blue. It's really weird. I can't explain it. It doesn't look the same as sunrise or sunset. It's different. It is really getting dark now. Okay, I think this is the, the smallest I've ever seen it. Definitely. Wow. Yeah, it's really, it's really tiny. Okay, we have two and a half minutes until it reaches full totality and already it's so it's dark outside. It's dark. It is the tiniest sliver and it's so cold. Oh, oh sh It is so dark right now. Wow! <laughs> wow! Oh my gosh. <gasps> what? <laughs> You can literally see the corona. It's starting to get a little lighter out. I can see it moving. Oh my gosh, this is so crazy. This is so crazy. Look at this. Look at that. I don't know where my glasses are. I can't even look. I don't know where they went. Oh, oh. I found it. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. Now the sun's just coming back. Now it's like nothing happened. It just, it's all back to normal. <laughs> that was one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my entire life. For some reason, I didn't expect it to look the way it looked. I, I, I don't know what I thought in my head. Wow. It was totally mind blowing. And there wasn't any words to be able to describe the wonder and the beauty of it. It was almost an emotional experience. It was really awesome. Much more than I expected, uh, and I was expecting a lot. It was one of the neatest things I think I've seen in my life. It actually got darker more than I realized that it would get dark. 
and it was just cool to see people's faces and just laying and enjoying the time. This being my second eclipse, I saw the 2017 eclipse. It was twice as long and twice as wonderful and I was still completely blown away by it. I really thought it was magical, honestly. It was something that, it was the Twilight Zone-esque kind of feeling. I really love the corona. It was just, it was so beautiful. And I got to spend time with my family and, and it was just, it was a wonderful experience once in a lifetime for us. So, unless we travel around. And so I really, really enjoyed it. It was great. Yeah, I cried. It was uh, every bit as awesome as I remembered from the last one. 10 out of 10, worth it. It was amazing makes me think about like 200 years ago people would be out working and all of a sudden you know would be watching the sun and it starts getting dark and what that must have felt like it's now seven at night and i have been trying to like figure out how to explain it the best I can because honestly <laughs> photos and videos don't do it justice. It goes from day to night within seconds. It's not like a sunset where the sun sets but there's still all of this leftover light that is scattered. It's not like that. It's just light and dark. I felt like I was running around like a chicken with my head cut off because I got so excited I knocked my glasses off my head and then when the diamond ring happened, I didn't have them to look at it. And so I was searching in the dark. I felt like Velma from Scooby-Doo. I was just like, where are my glasses? Yeah, but that was fun. Thanks for coming along with me on this journey. And I hope that you get to experience something like this one day too.